Hi, welcome to Architecting with Google Cloud. My name is Filippo Modella. How many times you headed to your favorite or needed diner spot that you probably were in a rush for an event which was about to start, or like myself, you had hungry kids running around and just wished the line wait time wasn't that long? I guess far too often, right? So what if there was a way to get in a priority queue to avoid those long lines and have a better experience? Well, there is a way, and today I invited Gaurav Argarwal. He's the co-founder of Sleek to share a little bit more about its AI and ML-based priority lane solution that retailers can implement in just one line of code and consumers like us can enjoy the shorter wait. Welcome, Gaurav, to the show. Hey, Filippo. Great to be here. Thanks for inviting me. Um, yeah, really excited to be here. Thank you. Wow, it's our pleasure. And it seems last time in, la in line sounds like a, an amazing idea. So tell us a little bit more about Sleek, how it works, and how this actually idea came about for you. Definitely. Sleek is about giving you your time back. Imagine going to an event um, and not having to wait in line. You know, go, going to 14 and his game um, and not having to wait in line to get in the event, and getting to your seat, getting a food, a drink, your favorite merch, or getting out of the event. That is what we're trying to do. We're trying to eliminate line anywhere and everywhere. It need not be stadium. It can be any of your favorite restaurant or your like a uh, uh, salon and like any place where there's a product or services to be sold and you can actually get your time back. You, uh, you can just reserve your slot for your product and service and get back uh, when it's your time or you can pay a premium fee and like a Disney Fast Pass, have a priority service to the like. Right, uh, very interesting. So I live in Texas and what if I own this very popular taco truck? What do I need to do to actually implement Sleek solution to make my customer's experience a little bit better? So we have spent a lot of time to make sure it is seamless and easy for our vendors to onboard on a system. Because, because we are in, in you know, uh, trying to give them as much ease of use as possible. For you to be able to onboard on a system, you can sign up on a website or you can work with one of our channel partners uh, like Chromi Hunger. Uh, once you sign up, you'll get an email. Uh, and in the email, you'll have a link. Link is very similar to once you click on the link, you will see a permission page. Very similar to what you see uh, when you install an Android app or when you uh, uh, click on a Facebook app and these sort of things. Um, you log in um, with your POS credential. So POS means Square, Clover, Toast, you know, these kind of pointers and systems. And uh, just give us permission and that's it. Voila. We're in the system. We, we get all the historical data. We can predict uh, how long it takes you to, you know, to make the burrito. Uh, and all sorts of stuff. We will generate a QR code and a unique link for uh, for your your restaurant or your your place, and you can place it on your website, um, print it out, and we'll definitely send you marketing material for that uh, to give you like uh, an exposure that you can use, um, and even put it on Google Maps. Okay, it seems uh, very straightforward and easy to implement. And you mentioned a few use cases outside of this restaurant industry, right? So what other meaningful use cases you've seen like sleek solutions being applied for recently? I think a, a use case that I'm very excited about and I can personally correlate to is, you know, even you could, because you, you work at Google, you know, you have these fancy cafeterias, uh, which have like a very nice, uh, you know, food, but it's it's always crowded. And um, we are working with uh, our channel partner, Romy Hunger, to power some of these, um, you know, commercial catering in, in some way. So as an employer, you can just reserve your meal. You can just say, hey, I want a burrito um, and wow, wow, and uh, and then I can just place the order and you'll get a text when you can just go pick it up. Uh, so you not you need not physically wait in line and, you know, kind of like waste your time. Uh, you can kind of like enjoy your time with your colleague um, and, and do whatever you want. Uh, so it just saves a time for you, give you like a, fra uh, a fast pass, Disney pass kind of service and uh, gives you time back. So thank you. Um, to help us further with our architecture conversation, uh, tell us a little about the scale of your operations today and how many customers usually are using your solutions on a daily basis. So we are powering uh, about 18,000 food trucks uh, via our partnership with our channel partner, Romi Hunger. And 18,000 is a very significant portion of the food truck industry in the United States. Well, that seems a lot to handle daily. So let's then start talking a little bit about your infrastructure setup and how do you set up your architecture stack today to reach such scale? on an ongoing basis. So to give some context, we are a very small team. We we have 10 employees um, across engineering and other aspect, and we are like 
five engineers. So we're a very small team, and uh, to ha- to handle like such a large scale, uh, we cannot do everything. You know, uh, DevOps, provisioning, security. There's like so many things going on, and when you're a startup, you want to focus on your business. Uh, that's the kind of philosophy that we have uh, been following. And that is one of the reasons we, we chose Kubernetes. It takes um, a lot of complexity out of the system for us, so we can kind of focus on our business logic and you know, our core value proposition, which is wait time and those other things. So we use Kubernetes, and Kubernetes takes care of all the complexities like you know networking, certification setup, load balancing, and all those uh, you know uh, the the mission critical thing that you definitely need in place and you want to rely on. And that's what Kubernetes provides us. All of our business logic sits uh, as like a, a a stateless pod, so to say, within Kubernetes, uh, basically a Docker image that we kind of publish, and uh, and it is used uh, in the Kubernetes as a pod. Uh, we can easily horizontally scale. Like uh, if we go from eighteen thousand to like one million, we can you know throw in more pods and like we scale very easily. And that's one of the benefit of Kubernetes. And actually, we saved uh, close to hundred k uh, from Kubernetes uh, in last two, last one year or so, which which has been like great for us as a small startup. You know. Um, Free money is like, it's always good. Uh, and, you know, as a philosophy, we are trying to cut down on as much as possible on the DevOps. As I said, uh, we are using managed services. That's where GKE comes in and plays like a great role for us. Uh, all the complexity is taken care of. It's a first grade citizen within GCP. Um, we can integrate from our um, from our other cloud provider, AWS. So we were on AWS before moving to GCP. And some of our data is still on um, AWS. Like we're using AWS with... Uh, cloud cloud front AWS as um, as a CDN and it works seamlessly uh, with our pods um, and MongoDB as a database. So um, I would say very scalable stack powered by multi cloud and yeah, um, it, it works for us right now. You mentioned a little bit of your recent migration to DCP. So what were the main technical driving decisions to, to that led you to make that decision? So uh, we were using. Kubernetes on AWS, like we are using here. And uh, we started AWS because of um, different reasons. Um, uh, we were using AWS when we were not using Kubernetes. Uh, we were like, when we were in MVP stage. Uh, somehow, Kubernetes was still, I would say, uh, getting into the AWS space. A uh, lot of things were missing. We had to use third party services like Helm and uh, NLens, um, which is doable when you are using like massive other aspects like DynamoDB. Uh, but when you are using AWS for just Kubernetes and like a few other things, it seemed a bit overkill, and that's where we were started exploring other aspects like GCP, Azure, and such. And using GCP, it's very native. Uh, everything is kind of uh, part of the GKE. I rarely would have to use Lens or Helm and these custom installing scripts and such. Uh, either I can do it from the Google Cloud console or like command line console. It works very well for us, and that's one of the main reasons we moved. Uh, and obviously, like uh, Google has its own benefit of uh, deep learning VMs. Uh, you know, Google is known for its own um, APIs. We are using Google Computer Vision APIs. So there was like also a motivation for us to move. Looking at your infrastructure, a lot of the Sleek's magic here comes from the IntelliJ infrastructure that you have and the data you have running on the edge. So could you talk a little bit about like that edge component of your infrastructure? Definitely. So just want to highlight why do we need need edge component? Why can't we just, you know, get data from point of the system and uh, that should be enough? So with point as a system, we get historical data. So we understand that weekends, lunch is going to be a busy time, Friday evening is going to be a busy time. But there are these uh, anomalous events, like when you're in a stadium, you don't know when the game is going to be scheduled. It can be on the weekend, but like time can vary. Or if you're a bar in front of like the uh, stadium, you will have like, once the game is over, a lot of people come in. And so you need to model all these things. And we cannot ignore these spikes because we are in the business of giving uh, the right wait time most of the time because otherwise I can just say 10 minutes wait time on average and, and you should be happy. That's not how it works for us. We need to be very accurate. That's what we need uh, to be able to figure out wait time on ground, how many people are there. And we have tried computer vision. We use state-of-the-art ULO v4 uh, computer vision models and even we're able to do better than that. Uh, but the privacy was a concern. So we ended up using a very proprietary technology where it's like a size of a, like a, I would say an iPhone like where we have this thing which you can plug in. It, it detects how many people are in a vicinity and it can make a differentiation in terms of are these people employees, are these people customer potentially, or how long the people are there. So we can get an idea of the foot traffic. And that kind of gives us the real time idea of, um, okay, there's an anomaly when a lot of people walked in and those sort of things. Um, and we fe- feed all this data um, in S3 for 
our AWS server for for long term um, long term storage. And again, because we were on AWS back then, but our currently is being migrated to uh, GCP for uh, for our model training purposes. So you are leveraging machine learning models to create a lot of these priority queues and, and predictions. So could you expand a little bit more on how you design this ML pipeline? Sure. So we have these uh, small IoT devices which gather data and send this anonymous data uh, to our services. So uh, two types of data sets are, are sent to us. One type of data set, uh, I would say, is the real time that kind of feeds into our system and is directly sent out to our uh, services running in, in GKE. So it kind of gives an idea, aggregate data, how many people are there at, at time t, and those sort of things. More nuanced data, still private uh, and like really sensitive data um, that we you know remove any kind of um, identifier and these sort of things is sent and uh, metalized in S3, AWS S3 bucket for us. And it is for archival storage. Whenever we want to like, you know, update the model that moves the data to cloud storage, which is on GCP. Uh, GCP provides like a very easy to, you know, move the data um, scripts and uh, pipeline for us. So we just use uh, off the shelf stuff for that. We use uh, G uh, GCP, GPU powered uh, deep learning VMs um, with PyTorch and train our model uh, on these VMs. And you know how the model training works. We train different versions of the model and push the model configuration to the GitHub, to the Docker, and then kind of uh, run a flight experiment. Uh, and GKE takes care of all this stuff from there. You know, like uh, shipping it is very easy for us. If the matrix looks fine, we can just flip the tie and kind of make it work. Great. And you're using PyTorch and deep learning VMs, uh, which are our compute engine virtual machines that are pre configured with the uh, most popular machine learning frameworks. So I would I would love to know a little bit more how that experience is like for you. So uh, it's not that I have PyTorch as my favorite thing. Um, so our expert engineer, like who who's been working with us for some time, he's an expert in PyTorch. And um, being a startup, we we give you the freedom to choose how you want to do things. So so that that's how we are in PyTorch. Um, we have not uh, seen any kind of complaints, uh, and like people are generally happy. It's not it's a second grade system. We never felt like that. Uh, everything is pre-installed. There's no dev dependencies to be handled, and, and there's no uh, issues like that. Everything natively natively integrates uh, with our pipeline. Even moving uh, cloud was very easy for us. Uh, for uh, when you move from AWS to GCP, so moving the pipeline has been very easy for us. Especially the the migration from S3 to cloud storage. I think that was the main concern we had. But even even that was very easy for us. Thank you, Gaurav. So to finalize a little bit our conversation here, there's a lot going on as we saw. And so how do you monitor and everything that is happening? And, you, and how's your deployment routine? How do you deploy your applications? Our deployment is uh, is very much yeah, using Kubernetes uh, pipelines. Um, we have all of our code in, in GitHub. Uh, after every PR push, um, there's a, a new label created and our Docker image is created, which is um, pushed back to Kubernetes on our flight experiment. That runs for some time. Um, and then it is updated to uh, production, depending on how you know the, the error rate and monitoring kind of like uh, gives us any, unless there's a bad signal, uh, it, it takes care of and, and it's being updated. Thank you, Gaurav. We just saw how Sleek created an AI-based priority lane solution so we can all get to our food services or any events quicker. By building the infrastructure on Google Cloud, they save around $100,000 just last year. And by scaling their serving platform on GKE and training their ML models on PyTorch using our deep learning VMs, thousands of retailers now can boost their profits while improving their on-site customer experience. Thanks once more, Gaurav, and thanks for being with us today and for being a Google Cloud customer. Thanks, Filippo. Thanks for having me. It was great chatting with you. If you like this session of Architecting with Google Cloud, please make sure to hit the Like button and also to subscribe so you can be up to date to any new upcoming sessions on architecting solutions on Google Cloud Platform. Thank you.